Hey cycling community, this is Steve Grusis, the Cycling Greek. It's been two and a half weeks since I got cardioverted after my second AFib. Each day I've been feeling more and more normal, so today I decided to do something a little different. I'd have my first climbing ride. The first nine miles can be categorized as upward bound undulations. After that, that took me to the bottom of the four lane, an eight mile, 6% average climb. Now I wasn't going to be able to do the whole 8 miles, in fact it took me about an hour to get to the bottom of the 4 lane. Since I was limiting myself to 2 hours for the ride, I figured I had about another 20, 20 plus minutes before I had to turn around. Why am I limiting myself to 2 hours for this ride? Well this segues into a great question I got from one of my subscribers. He wrote, since many things can trigger AFib, exercise being one of them, why put more emphasis on exercise as opposed to caffeine as an example? And why are you limiting your rides to two hours? I would think it would be more like don't exceed 80% of your max for more than 10% of your ride. Seems to me you could ride all day at 20% over your resting heart rate and not do any damage or trigger AFib episode. What are your thoughts? Pretty much for my situation, I think I agree with him. Pretty much the reason I'm doing what I'm doing is that I'm being super cautious. I don't want to trigger another AFib incident again. At the same time, I want to see how far I can go and if I can keep up a lifestyle that I can live with. Let's talk some details. First, as he writes, there are many things that can trigger AFib. I just don't know what triggers it in me. There was a period of time when I was racing earlier in the year and my heart was pretty darn quiet. Things only started happening after I started doing long distance training. So that's why I'm thinking that I can't do any long distance training anymore for ultras. When I got AFib the second time, it wasn't during my race, it was the next morning. I woke up with it. Now, the first time I got AFib, it was after that same race. So is that race a trigger? Well, I doubt that. Did I wake up the first time with AFib when I first had AFib? I don't know. I just remember that first time, it just seemed like I was in an overtraining situation for much longer than was reasonable. I went to the doctor after that. As for limiting my upper intensity during a ride, well, that seems like a reasonable next step. Again, I'm just being cautious. I had another viewer in a comment refer me to an article by Leonard Zinn in the 628 online issue of Bello News. In that article, Leonard wrote about using an e-bike. For those of you not familiar, an e-bike is basically a bicycle with a motor on it that offloads some of the watts when you pedal. I wrote back something like, that'd be on my list of things to consider should I get to that point. In the article, Leonard talks about cycling being his main mode of socialization. So without the bike, he wasn't socializing anymore. He seemed to be more like a, a quiet type of person. I think that's why he got the e-bike. Speaking of triggers, Leonard also wrote that his AFib is triggered whenever he goes above 110 beats per minute. I can certainly see why he chose an e-bike. It seems like a good option for him. As stated earlier, even though I wanted to climb for another 20 plus minutes, after 15 minutes, I was getting tired. It may have been because of a combination of bonking a little bit and the heat that was coming on. As I was nearing the end of my ride, I was caught by my teammate and his training partner. We took a minute to catch up and then I got on their wheels. He was going his usual fast endurance pace and I was having trouble hanging on. I'm thinking, man, I do have a ways to go. But I tell you, it was sure great to ride with someone, even for just a little bit. I hope this video was of value to you. Keep those comments coming. Who knows, maybe they'll be in the next video. Remember, comment, like, subscribe, and share this. The Cycling Greek.